They say Archaeopteryx is proof of, for evolution. You got one here on the table, brother? Archaeopteryx. Whenever you buy a bag of dinosaurs, they almost always stick one of these in there. Archaeopteryx. Wow. And this somehow gets an impression to the kids. Wow, we got proof that dinosaurs turned to birds. Here's one here with feathers on it. They're lying. So not only are all the scientists supposedly lying and all of the teachers are supposedly lying in some huge global conspiracy, but now even the toy company is lying too? Why? Because they show Archaeopteryx had feathers? How is that a lie? It's still in the textbooks. I mean, today, about Archaeopteryx, and it's been proven years ago, Archaeopteryx was just a bird, a perching bird. Every few decades, we happen across the rarest of all animals, a scientist who rejects evolution. For example, astronomer Fred Hoyle had no understanding of evolution, and he argued against it like a creationist, because he kind of was a creationist in his own weird way. He looked past the feathers and noticed that the skeleton differed significantly from any modern bird, but that it was almost identical to a small dinosaur called Compsonathus. So Hoyle argued that Archaeopteryx was a forgery, where feather impressions had been glued onto the fossil. And back in Darwin's day, the leading evolution denialist was Sir Richard Owen, the man who invented the word dinosaur. He had the idea that birds were one kind of animal and dinosaurs were another, and he refused to accept the mounting evidence already in his time that these were both the same thing. Owen had his own weird notions of divine design, where his god was a tinkerer who occasionally came out with new and improved models over his previous attempts, which no one believes today. And Owen was determined to undermine evolutionary theory with his authority in the scientific community to establish in the public media a clear division between warm-blooded and nurturing birds and what he said had to be cold-blooded, terrible lizards. So he examined the celebrated Archaeopteryx, and he ignored the fact that Archaeopteryx didn't have certain features that were exclusive to birds. And he dismissed its reptilian features, every trait held in common with Compsonasus and other dinosaurs, saying that the particulars in which birds differ from all mammals and agree with reptiles are comparatively unimportant ones of the skeleton. As if the bones don't matter. As if all that matters are the feathers. Because some people think that the clothing matters more than the core, the essence of the thing, and what it really is deep down. Yet, Owen was able to find one skeletal trait, only one, that hadn't been found on dinosaurs too. The fact that the hallux is opposable so that it can perch, whereas the hallux of Compsonathus was in a slightly different position. That's it. On that one trivial difference, Owen declared that Archaeopteryx was just a bird, despite what every other scientist since then has had to say about it. Alan Fiducia, who believes in evolution, says it's not a missing link. As I mentioned in the previous video, Alan Fiducia is one of the founding members of BAND, a small association determined to deny and reject and argue against any and all evidence that birds descended from dinosaurs. I can't tell you how personally disturbing it is for a pair of professional paleontologists to be so dishonest as to essentially swear a covenant to reject, conceal, and deny evidence, just like creationists do. Several creationist organizations have published a statement of faith wherein they admit, as if this was something to be proud of, that they will automatically reject without consideration any and all evidence that ever contradicts their preferred belief. That is fundamentally dishonest, and I am disgusted that any scientist would do that too. But that's what Rubin and Fiducia do. So every single article published in the last quarter century that tries to deny that birds are dinosaurs will have Rubin's and or Fiducia's name on it. Everyone else knows better by now, and I think even they must certainly know better, too, because there's just too much evidence against them. It should always be that it doesn't matter what you'd rather believe. All that matters is what the truth is, regardless how you feel about it. It had the right features for flight. All the features of the brain were for flight, okay? We can't say that all the features of a modern bird's brain are for flight. Some of parts of their brains are for other things, too. All we can say is that Archaeopteryx had evolved and was evolving a brain in pace with the evolution of its wings, because of course it did, obviously. Archaeopteryx means ancient wing, and he had claws on his wings. Well, that's kind of unusual, okay. But 12 birds today have claws on their wings. The swan, the ibis, the hoatzin, several birds have claws. Darwin noticed that the bones of modern birds look like three dinosaur fingers fused together, 
which wouldn't make any sense if they were created that way. So he predicted that if birds had evolved from dinosaurs instead of being created, then we ought to find a fossil with unfused wing fingers. And just two years later, they found exactly that, proving that Darwin was right. 160 years ago. But Sir Richard Owen couldn't handle that, so he tried to minimize it the same way this preacher just did, by saying that it's kind of unusual, but so what? Owen simply dismissed these wing fingers by saying that it was relatively unimportant, ignoring and rejecting any and all evidence of evolution, just like religious apologists still do today. They say, well, he had teeth in his beak. Well, not many birds have teeth. Some do. There's a hummingbird has teeth in his beak. But most birds don't have teeth, I agree. Actually, some mammals have teeth, some don't. Some birds have teeth, some don't. Some fish have teeth, some don't. Some of you have teeth, some don't, okay? So, <laughs> missing link. <coughs> no living birds have teeth. The hummingbird has serrations in its beak, much like geese do too, that act like teeth in as much as they can hold an item in place without slipping. A better example is the extinct Pelagornis. It had vicious serrations in its beak that are called pseudoteeth, because actual teeth are made of bone and are rooted into the jaw. There were birds with teeth, like Hesperornis and Ichthyornis and a couple others, but those lived way back in the Cretaceous, alongside the last of the non-avian dinosaurs. When the first Archaeopteryx fossil was identified, it was missing a head, so Richard Owen assured himself that later finds would reveal that it had a regular toothless beak like all other birds. But ten more fossils were found since then, most of them with heads, and none of them had beaks. Instead, they all had reptilian teeth. And that is a transitional trait. It's also been shown that chickens still have the gene to grow teeth in embryo, a feature that would not exist if they were created as they are. That trait would only be there if it's inherited from ancestors who once had teeth. The Chinese dino bird was a forgery, and we don't have time to cover all that today, but we give lots more on that on the uh, one of the debates I did. Yes, Archiraptor was a forgery made out of an actual feathered dinosaur that really exists. But notice that the preacher is here again quoting from some other pseudoscience propaganda mill trying to pretend that Archaeopteryx was a forgery too, repeating Fred Hoyle's strange accusations that Archaeopteryx was just a fossil of Compsonathus with feathers glued onto it. That's what this article implies as well. But think about this. How is it that if Archaeopteryx was a forgery and we have a dozen fossils of it now, how come we're only hearing about this from a reality-denying conspiracy theorist at a church? I mean, every scientist who examined Archaeoraptor said it was a fake. So why don't we have similar reports for Archaeopteryx, too? Because a whole lot more scientists have studied that. Instead, all we have is copy pasta from creationscience.com. Can you get any less reputable? And then there's why someone would do that. In the isolated case of the Chinese farmers trying to fool a patsy for tens of thousands of American dollars, I get it. But that can't be the case with any of the fossils of Archaeopteryx, certainly not with all of them. Yet these people imagine that they are all in a massive global conspiracy against God. As if scientists secretly believe that God is real, but they're all trying to conspire against him to make God mad? Nobody would do that, nor could they if they really believed in God. Then remember that this preacher said that... And it's been proven years ago, Archaeopteryx was just a bird, a perching bird. If it was proven years ago that Archaeopteryx is just a perching bird, then how can it also have been proven that it's a forgery that was never even real? Remember when I said that the perfect example of a transitional species is when creationists can't agree and say that it's either 100% this or 100% that because they can't consider that it would be anything in between? Well, here we have this preacher saying that Archaeopteryx is just a bird, and creationscience.com says it's just a dinosaur with feathers glued onto it. Which is it, preacher? Because it can't be both. But it could be neither, because the preacher and his source are both wrong. Archaeopteryx is a legitimate fossil, one of several, in a series of feathered dinosaurs with transitional features leading to the earliest forms of still incomplete, not yet 100% birds. It's true feathers and scales are both made of keratin. Same building block, that's true. But that's where the similarity stops, okay? No, that's just the beginning. These are the traits that Archaeopteryx shares with other dinosaurs that are not shared with modern birds. And here is a list of transitional traits that Archaeopteryx shares only with other Silurosaurs. 
Actually, birds and reptiles have different lung system, different reproductive system, different body covering, different brain, I mean, a different circulatory system. Thousands of differences exist between dinosaurs and birds. That could be a whole seminar by itself. That was a whole seminar by itself when Answers in Genesis hired an anatomist to misreport and misrepresent avian evolution. That prompted me to get with an expert on Peruvian dinosaurs to do a 10-part series showing that dinosaurs and birds share exactly the same knees, thighs, legs, hands, arms, wings, wishbone, pelvis, shoulder attachments, pneumatic hollow bones, as well as feather coloration and formation, and also the type of brain and eyes. All the same. Traits that are common in both dinosaurs and birds, but that were not shared with any other animal. I'll include a link to that series in the description. It's interesting, there are two different kinds of dinosaurs, the bird hip and the lizard hip dinosaur. Their hips are very different. No, they're not. It's the same in both. The only difference is the orientation of the pubic bone, which varies in some species, including theropod dinosaurs with an avian configuration in their so-called cerisian pelvis. And since that is the only difference, and it is a minor one, it prompted paleontologists to move away from Seeley's 19th century classification based on the pelvic bone to adopt a new arrangement that accounts for all the new data, including evidence of feathers on ceratopsians. Ask an evolutionist, which type of dinosaur evolved into the bird? Was it the bird hip or the lizard hip? And they will probably kind of hang their head and quietly say, well, it was, it was the lizard hip. Oh, so now the hip's got to turn around backwards too in addition to the billions of other changes you got to make. Yes, so within the, the, so the conventional classification of dinosaurs into these two major groups, bird hip dinosaurs and lizard hip dinosaurs, that's come under a bit of fire since 2017 due to a new study which has suggested different relationships among the major dinosaur groups. Let's not worry about that because again, that would be, that would be another, another tangent. But within, within theropods, that's just stick to theropods, predatory dinosaurs and birds, they start out with this so-called lizard hip configuration. So where it's always difficult to explain this to people because as mammals are, our pelvic bones are very different from those of dinosaurs we have. So there's the ilium at the top of your pelvis, which you can feel at your, at your sides. Uh, and then uh, between your legs pointing downwards, forwards and backwards, you've got pubic bones and ischial bones. And our pubic and ischial bones are short, but those are dinosaurs. Their pubic and ischial bones are very long. They project variously downwards and forwards and downwards and backwards. And the typical condition for reptiles and indeed the typical condition for vertebrate animals is to have pubic bones that project down and forwards and ischial bones that project down and backwards. So if you've got that condition, and that's the so-called lizard hip condition in dinosaurs. That's just the normal vertebrate condition. It's nothing special. Most theropods have got that typical condition. But then in some of them, the, the pubic bone, instead of pointing down and forwards, became down straight down instead of down and forwards. And then over time began to rotate backwards such that it was pointing down and backwards. So theropods evolved the bird hip condition which is also present in the so-called bird hip dinosaurs, which don't include birds. And it gets so confusing the way, you know, when you try and explain it, that I, I just generally try, try and avoid it. There's no evidence of how dinosaurs evolved to birds. None. Zero. The evidence that there really is for the evolution of birds from dinosaurs includes, from paleontology, an impressive series of transitional species, initially illustrated by Archaeopteryx and further illuminated by dozens of other intermediates, with every stage represented from primitive reptilian dinosaurs to increasingly avian forms, developing into full birds. Plus, a number of ambiguous forms still on the fence, such that only the experts can tell whether it's a bird or just a dinosaur. And taxonomically, morphologically, birds are dinosaurs according to a suite of uniquely definitive traits, including the same cardiovascular system, the same reproductive system, the same pneumatic skeletal system found only in that lineage of theropod dinosaurs. In embryology, that list of evidence continues with the fact that chickens retain the, the gene to grow teeth and fetal development of the opposable hallux shows that it moves to the position of a modern bird from the ancestral position found in theropods. So when the preacher says that there is absolutely no evidence, none, zero, what that means is that there is literally tons of rock-solid evidence from multiple independent fields of study and overwhelming preponderance of compelling and conclusive evidence of every type far beyond all reasonable doubt. 
But the preacher is trying to defend a belief system that depends on unreasonable doubt. He holds to a dogmatic interpretation of aged folklore, long discredited, so that even if he knew the truth, and I think he does because I and others have explained this to him, yet he keeps repeating the same errors, he still has to defend the faith. Even when he knows it's not true, he still has to make empty assertions of baseless speculation that are factually false and contradict himself with misunderstood, misrepresented, misquoted misinformation. Thus, his entire seminar is baloney. It's all baloney. <laughs>